These are the unwritten and unspoken rules of medical school. You don't want to miss this. All right, guys, this is going to be a fun video on my personal Instagram, which you should definitely follow if you aren't already. I asked you guys for what you thought those rules were, the unwritten and unspoken rules of med school. And I'm going to go through some of my favorite responses, give you my take, and then at the end also give you some unwritten and unspoken rules that I think are applicable and that you should definitely know about if you are in med school or are planning to. All right, so first off from Roshan Patel 1999, always drop out and pursue YouTube instead. True that. Raj Chua says, always bring a cheap pen you are willing to lose because attendings or residents will never return it. Yes, I would say the Pilot G2.38 pens, which I've discussed before on this channel, these are the favorite pens by most people in the hospital because they have a very fine tip, so you can write small and fast because you need to write really quickly, usually when you're in the hospital. And they're reliable, they, they write decently well, they're cheap, easily replaceable. So I had a lot of black ones and blue ones. If you want to find those specific pens, I'll have a link down in the description. But yes, you are going to lose a lot of pens in med school. It's just, it happens. Opposite Fight Club rules. First rule of med school, tell everyone about med school. That's pretty funny. I guess there's a few ways to interpret this. One would be that as a pre-med, you're working really, really hard to get into med school, and then you're so proud once you got in that you wanna tell everyone, hey guys, I worked really hard, look at this accomplishment, I'm really proud of myself. The other component is that when you're in med school, it's all consuming, your life is med school. If you do sports and other things, you can still do it like a little bit, but most of your waking hours are gonna be thinking, doing, obsessing, studying, all about med school and the human body. Don't answer a question that was asked to the resident. Yes. So if you're a third year, fourth year med student on a rotation and you're in the operating room, and let's say the attending asks the resident something, do not blurt out the answer even if you know it. That is very disrespectful. You're not gonna win any friends or any favors in doing that. You know, let them answer. Always think of your behavior in a third year or fourth year clerkship rotation through the lens of, am I making anyone else look bad? Because you don't wanna do that. Uh, I don't even, I don't even know, man. It looks like you're having a good time in med school, though. Don't f around wasting precious time. Every hour matters when studying in medical school. True that. I mean, don't be a robot, but in med school, you are going to be much more aware of how you're spending every moment because you have fewer moments to waste. Free time is a scarce resource, and it's a good life skill. I mean, sure, you don't want it to be that way for the rest of your life, but if you approach it in the right way, you'll actually learn a lot of good skills with time management and productivity in medical school, especially if you force yourself to, you know, try to be at the top of your class or take on other responsibilities, if you're trying to start a business or, or whatever. It's one of those things where it's what you make of it. And sure, you, you can be stressed out and be miserable, or you can see the silver lining and look at the skills that you can learn and develop. Don't make the resident slash intern look made in front of seniors. I think maybe they meant bad or something. But yeah, this kind of goes back to the, the other point about Always pay attention to how others are looking based on your behavior. You don't want to make anyone else look bad. The seniors always write no matter what. I disagree with this. There are going to be certain institutions that are a little bit more old school and traditional where the hierarchy is more important. You have to say sir and ma'am to everyone who's above you, which I was doing at the beginning of med school. And it kind of depends on, on where you're at. So at the Navy Balboa, yes, I'm going to be saying yes, sir, no, sir, and ma'am and all that stuff but at a lot of institutions on the West Coast where things are more casual and people aren't dressed up and super proper, then a lot of times they'd be like, are you military? Like, why are you calling me sir? Why are you calling me ma'am? This is weird. But at most places, no, I, I would not say the seniors are always right. There was this really cool story from, was it Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell? One of the books I read where they were talking about how in certain airlines, I think it was like a Korean airline, the co-pilot was not to question the pilot and that actually resulted in a, in a strange dynamic where if things were dangerous, the co-pilot didn't feel comfortable raising their concerns to the pilot and then you got accidents, crashes, and bad things. So similar lessons have been learned in medicine and in medicine, like in timeout or in the operating room, there's very much an emphasis on actually speaking out if you think there is something that's not safe, even if you are the lowly med student or you're not the most senior person in the room. Eat when you can, sleep when you can, don't mess with the pancreas. True words. So I think that came from House of God and it refers to your surgery rotation. Don't get a girlfriend during medical school. Seriously, don't. I disagree with this. I think everyone is different and depending on where your own personal development and your readiness for a relationship is, 
being in a relationship may actually be useful. And I know for me, I got in a relationship the end of my first year. It was definitely a very large net positive during my med school experience, for sure, absolutely. And I talk a little bit about dating and med school and, and those lessons that I've learned in my dating playlist. Learn to read the room and understand when it's appropriate to ask questions, absolutely. In the classroom, this isn't as important because it's a classroom, you ask questions. There are moments in the hospital where you should not be asking questions. If you're in the operating room and things are really tense and it's like hitting the fan moment, then no, you should not be asking questions. Let let the people handle the situation and just try to be helpful. And if you know a an attending is talking to the patient and it's like a, a deep, heavy, you know, conversation, which sometimes happens, talking about outcomes, talking about bad news, then yeah, it's not the time to pipe in with your need to learn. You can do that after the conversation. And this is more just like general social skills more than anything else. First rule about Fight Club is to not talk about Fight Club. That's interesting that that's the complete opposite of the uh, the first one that we went over. Hierarchy, unfortunately, trumps patient care, so shut up unless you're the attending. I disagree with that, as I spoke about previously, about um, the seniors always being right. Success is despite admin, not because of admin. So this is pretty funny. With any field, the administration and kind of the, um, the bureaucratic stuff tends to be a detriment for the most part, at least for the people in it, it feels that way. I don't think that's necessarily unique to medicine or medical school. I think it's, it probably applies to most fields, actually. Asking others uninvitedly what percent they get on exams and quizzes, etc. Don't do this. Who cares, man? Just stay in your lane, work hard, try to improve from how you performed in the last test, improve your study strategies, experiment, do all that stuff. But how other people are doing, like, who cares? You know what the class average is, you know what the max is, you know what the min is, or what the, the fail or the pass line is, rather. So just try to do well yourself. Looking out for one another. I like this. This is wholesome. I think a lot of schools that are pass-fail, including my school, which was pass-fail the preclinical years, and then the clinical years, it's graded. I think um, it's more conducive when you have a pass-fail curriculum to be more collaborative and not to worry about like, oh, is that person going to do better than me on the cardio block exam, and then that's going to ruin my chance for getting AOA or whatever. Actually, my school didn't even have AOA. So yeah, look out for one another. It's going to bring you together. It's going to just be a better atmosphere, and you definitely want that when you're working really hard in med school. To never use technology in front of high and senior professors slash doctors. This is a good one. This is a really good one. I remember in my third year, I actually specifically bought an iPad mini because if you're on your third year clerkship and you're walking around the hospital studying, looking up relevant information on UpToDate or whatever other resource with your phone, it looks bad. I actually remember a resident pointing out a student that was just leaning on a wall during rounds. It was internal medicine, so we were rounding for hours. Leaning on a wall, and looking kind of casual on their phone. They could have been studying, but it looked like they were texting or being on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. And that's not a good look because a lot of your clerkship grade is a subjective evaluation from your seniors. So you get an iPad mini or another tablet device, a small tablet device that you can put in your white coat pocket that when you use makes you seem studious and professional and hardworking, which I think is hilarious because the truth is, you can still text from your iPad. You can still go on Instagram from your iPad. You can still mess around from your iPad, but the actual optics of it are important. And that's for better or for worse. I think mostly for worse. But because of that, you want to be careful using your phone in particular in front of your, your seniors on clerkships. Yeah, so don't use your phone because optics matter and be careful about that. The best wellness is doing well in classes. I don't know if I agree with that. I think... Prioritizing class performance at the expense of other things in your life is not wellness. That's the opposite of wellness. That's having an unhealthy relationship with your performance in class, actually. You should be okay finding the optimal balance for yourself where you do well enough in class that you're happy and that it will bring you closer towards your career goals, which would be relevant to what you're matching into for residency, while still having a personal life, exercise, eating healthy, sleeping enough, all that stuff. Leave when given the option to leave or stay. I'm actually curious what you guys think. So let me know with a comment specifically what you think about when a resident tells you as a med student, hey, if you want to go home now, because I would say for most of the time, it's totally fine. Go ahead, do it, whatever. But there are, I feel, depends on the personality. Again, most of the time it's totally fine to leave, but certain personalities, they want to see what you're made of. They want to see how Hard working are you? Are you gonna come before everyone and stay after everyone? How much do you want to become a ex, you know, 
orthopedic surgeon, plastic surgeon, whatever. And it is a little bit of these mind games, which is so silly. Let's be real, it's so silly. But you're gonna have to feel it out. I'll probably actually receive some some hate for saying this because most people are like, oh, you should just totally leave. It, it's silly that, you know, the residents and attendees, they don't care. I mean, from my experience in residency and stuff and, and even as a med student and just observing these things, I would say usually people don't care, but certain specialties and certain characters are gonna care more about it and they, they are willing to play these mind games. All right, so a few that I wanna add these are just the first things that are coming to mind. One thing is when you're on your clerkship rotations, they have call rooms. And at some institutions, at some hospitals, the call rooms will have a lock on it. And at other places, they won't. At my hospital, what we did is we took one of those really small square towels and then you hang it on the handle outside the door so that people know that it's occupied, someone else is using it. Because the last thing you want when you're in the middle of a call night and trying to get a couple hours of sleep is to be woken up by someone else walking in and turning on the lights. Another one I'm going to say is because med school classes are so small, they're usually like 80, 100, 150, maybe 200, some are more, but um, tends to be very small classes. It's not uncommon for there to be more gossip than what you're used to in college, because usually college campuses are much larger and you get lost in all that. But because everyone knows everyone, everyone just starts talking about other people's business. It's almost like high school gossip in a way, which, yeah, it, that's not a pleasant thing. Stay out of it. You don't want to get caught up in the drama and the he said, she said, whatever. Try to stay in your lane. Try not to cause any commotion. Don't stir up nonsense. Just do your work. Get along with people. Don't gossip. It'll just make your life way more complicated. Another one is on rotations. Don't bring down other students. Don't bring down other people. It just makes you look bad. People can see it a mile away. I know when I first started my third year clerkships, I was on internal medicine. The student I was rotating with, she'd be like reading up on my patients so that when the attending asked me, like she would like blurt out the answer. That doesn't make you look good. It makes, like, it just causes tension. It makes you look like you're playing these games. Don't do that, no one likes that. Oh, another one, how could I forget this? Definitely subscribe and like all of the videos on the Med School Insiders and Kevin Jabal YouTube channels because that stuff is gold. Hashtag unbiased. Another one would be to avoid talking about finances. In med school, you're gonna have most classmates who are taking out substantial amounts of loans, and you're gonna have a small proportion, although at my school, it was actually a substantial number who don't have to take out any loans, and that's usually because their parents are helping pay the bills. So if you're a student that needs to take out loans and your friend shares, hey, I didn't take out any loans, my parents helped me, then that student may feel a little bit resentful, but on the other hand, that student that doesn't have to take out any loans may feel almost guilty that, oh, hey, my friend here needs to take out loans and I got it easy and, you know, it can just kind of change the dynamic, cause a little bit of resentment, people making underhand comments. I think it's usually best to just avoid talking finances, at least like specific numbers as they relate to yourself. I think talking about financial principles, sound financial behaviors, like living within your means and not spending extravagantly. Because a lot of people at med school, they'll actually justify silly financial decisions like buying some crazy expensive gadget, like, ah, this is a, just a drop in the bucket. This $3,000 gaming PC, ah, doesn't matter. Ah, it, it doesn't matter, especially when you add the interest that's gonna be accruing for the next several years until you pay off that loan. For the most part, avoid talking specifics. It's just gonna, it's just gonna complicate your life. This is one that I don't think is universal, but I think is very helpful. When you're in the hospital, be productive as often as you can, because when you're in the hospital, when you're in the operating room, when you're in the clinic, you're not gonna be able to relax, unwind, rejuvenate, feel great, and therefore it's better to use that time productively. When I had downtime in the clinic or wherever, I'd be doing my flashcards or I'd be studying, or if I really was feeling fried you know, mentally, then I would pick up a suturing kit or tie some knots on my scrub, the loop for like you know, tying, tying it around your waist. And I would just try to be productive in every moment so that when I went home, I could minimize the number of hours I had to spend practicing my suturing or studying, and I could just do a little bit of studying, eat some food, get a workout in, and go to sleep. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I'm sure there is. I'm sure like five more will come to me as soon as I stop recording this video. But if you guys have any that you think I missed, please do leave a comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. And if you enjoyed this video, then check out my dating playlist or this video here. Much love, and I'll see you guys there.